I want to talk about the camera package and this kind of unique film transfer process. I don't know if I have it 100% correct here, but it sounds like you shot digitally and then transferred to film and then redid it back to digital. It sounds like there's there's quite, there was quite a path that this film had taken in the transfer process. Can you talk to us about that process and kind of how you got there? We, again, early in the discussions, Denny and I were talking about what is this film? There's always the, the the big picture, like this is how it feels. Yeah. Then there's like, okay, welcome to the land of reality. Let's yeah, exactly. we have to film this thing, right? Um, so how the hell do we film this thing? Like, what is it? Is it film? Is it 65? Is it digital? Is it is it is it anamorphic, spherical? Like what is it? Um, so we went out to the desert, uh, just not about two hours out of LA. There's some great sand dunes out there. We shot some uh, 65 mil IMAX, 35 mil film, Alexa. It was a bit of a smorgasbord of, of cameras. Um, we shot a couple of stand-ins, doing some walking, moving around. And then we went to, there's a brutalist uh, dam, I think it's the Sepul Sepulveda Dam in Los Angeles, and shot some stuff there as well. Tested out uh, diffusion, like going back to that point about things being diffused, like using, uh, like I think there's, uh, black silks that I was a few friends of mine have used that looked kind of interesting. So I started to get a feel for what diffusion might work yeah. and what wouldn't work. Um, and then we got the footage and we, we cut a little, you know, five minute piece just, to, and we watched it and we um, assessed what was the, the feel that we were after. And had you asked me before that test, what I wanted to shoot, it would have been IMAX film, 35 mil anamorphic for non IMAX. Um, a lot like, I guess, what um, you know, what 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 Linus used on recent Bond, and what what Hoyters and and Nolan have you, Chris Nolan have used. Like that that package for me felt good, like just in theory. Um, but in practice, we looked at it, and it, and Denis went, oh, "This is not right. This is not. This is too nostalgic." His words were, "It's too nostalgic." And what did like, that mean okay. to you when you heard that? Too nostalgic. Well, it meant that we were doing a sci-fi, but without all of the sci-fi gag. Like we, there were no blinkies, there were you know no chrome robots walking around. Like you know there was no computers in this world. Like it's, it's not how this world works for very deliberate reason. Yeah. So a lot of the design sort of looks a little bit ancient and brutalist and simple. They're like you know if somebody had said to you this is something set in an alternate universe ten thousand years ago kind of believe it because there's very little technology. Yeah. So I think his reaction and agreeing with him was that in that respect, um, film made it look a little bit dated. Whereas mm -hmm. the digital tests that we did had more of a, the feel that he was, he was kind of after, but it was still a little bit sharp and a little bit digital. So in that case, we realized that to, to create that softness, Again, going back to the softness thing, if we went out to film, we would then take the edge off the digital. So in combination with the lenses that we chose, the T-stop we shot them at, the diffusion we used, and then the film out, we kind of created this sort of soft soft, soft world, not as harsh as, as, yeah. as pure digital. So the camera that you chose, what, which camera did you end up choosing? We shot with the Alexa LF. Okay. All right. So you did the Alexa LF. And then you did a 35 millimeter transfer? So we did. We tested all, we tested 65, uh, IMAX, 15 perf, 8 perf. Uh, we tested all of the op op options, ended up feeling that 35 mil, uh, the, the Interpos, I think, Jupneg, or again, this is where I'm, I, I, I look at the, the footage, we agree on something, and I forget the next. Yes, it's out of your mind. Yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. So I should really become more au fait, but there are. There are articles that that like AC Mag are doing, and and that are more technical in that that they've spoken to to the post house. So I would highly recommend to get into the to the to the weeds of what that is, is to is to listen to the words of the of Dave Cole, my colorist. Yeah, we and we'll we'll search for a couple of links to those stories and throw them in the show notes if you guys for for those of you out there that really want to get technical with it. Um, but it's just an interesting process nonetheless. So when you got this back. What about it gave you that feeling of like, yes, this, we found it. This is it. Well, I'd, I'd seen it before. I'd done the test before a number of times. Not 
for any film, but I knew that this was a technique that was lingering and was possible. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody had used it on a film before that. I think, I, I believe Photochem might have done something with S- Soderbergh a few years prior. Um, anyway, I can't remember exactly, but not an entire movie. And when we looked at it and tested it, there was a sh- one particular shot of a sunset that was clear as day, no pun intended, mm. what the difference was. It was obvious. This one yeah. shot of the sunset, and it became so clear that what this film, what the film does, and again, I'm not, I'm not dismissing pure digital here, or nor am I dismissing pure film, because sometimes the film digital debate can get a little like religious almost, where people are kind of going, oh, you're dissing on digital, you're dissing on film. It's like it's not the case. It's just for this film, the, what the film did was it softened the edges of the digital. And it gave us something that film acquisition couldn't give us. And it also gave us something that uh, digital acquisition couldn't give us. Mm-hmm.